Welcome to my channel, my name is Marlies and today we are going to spend some time on building the structure for an explosion box in Halloween style. In front of me I have two sheets of black paper, 12 by 12 inch. And this will be the base where I will make the box out of. I have scored some lines on my paper so you will have like a plus sign on it and I'm going to tear the top and the bottom on this side then flip the paper over and I will do the same on this side too. Like I just mentioned the box is supposed to look like an, a plus sign so that means all corners have to be removed top and bottom. Now that the plus sign is a very visible like this, you can fold all sides up and you will have the base of the box. And when you make a second one slightly smaller, you can stack them both up. For the bottom layer, I got out my file cards from Tim Holtz and I'm going to place them after I altered the size on the four rectangles. I will use the Tim Holtz Halloween 2023 backdrops to, uh, well, to decorate all my basic elements. So here are the papers that I'm going to use. This one will go on the big underlayer. This one will go on the pockets and the right one will go on the smaller layer. This dress collage medium is the glue that I'm going to use to glue my papers down. Just give your surface a nice and even layer of glue and place the paper into the right position. Then I'm going to tear off any excess and I will follow my way around on all four rectangles. This dress collage medium is also the medium that I'm going to use to glue my file cards down. And I found out that I could exactly place two file cards next to each other on the width of one backdrop. After the gluing and drying part I need to split the cards. Um, roughness I like so I'm going to tear uh, some of the papers. And only for this part I need a little scissor. It is more precise work and I want it to be more exact. And even uh, when you have like a sharp edge because of the cutting it does not matter because you can always make it more rough with a paper distressor or with a blade of your scissor. And now we have four file cards for our bottom layer. Let's go straight away to our smaller layer and I'm going to repeat the process with another kind of paper. So I'm going to use the glue and glue every piece of paper on the rectangles. I just told you about roughening up the edges, so this is my paper distressor and this is the result that the paper distressor gives on the paper. I really like it because it means the paper, the fibers of the paper will be more open and will be more like absorbing when you want to use ink or maybe some kind of spray. And for this project I chose the Distress Oxide Spray uh, Black Suit and I'm going to get the ink straight away out of the bottle with the nozzle and I'm going to smear it along the edges of my papers where the paper fibers are more open. I will wet it down a little bit so it can flow and run a little bit more. I really like this technique because you have to let go of control. Uh, what you get is what you get and that is it. Uh, and I really, really love that. And why do I love this so much? Because it is against my uh, perfectionism. Uh, you cannot be perfect with this technique. And that is the ultimate thing that you can let go. That is why I love it so much. I will color all my papers this way so the all over look will be the same and cohesive.
I will turn my bottom layer and I found a piece of backdrop that I like that will go on the outside. We are looking at the outside of the box. Uh, of course, I'm going back in there with my distress collage medium and I'm going to glue the backdrops down on every four of the rectangles. Only thing that you can keep in mind is that your pattern will go in the same direction. I am also going to repeat the steps with my paper distressor on this side of the paper because after the distressing part we are going to add the same ink again and you need the fibers to be open so the ink can soak in very well. And this is what we have, but you can see the paper endured a lot of water. So I really want to reinforce the inside of my box, but also the outside of the box. Now directly onto the little insert of the explosion box, I want this also to be covered. So I found a nice backdrop, dark, black with white dots, and I'm going to cover all four rectangles on the inside. All four parts are covered right now, but we are going to repeat the same process of distressing and also adding ink, black suit. Uh, but you might think it is black paper and you are choosing black suit, but uh, yeah, do not be afraid. Uh, I have chosen the oxide black suit and that means there is a little bit of chalk in there and that will be very well visible when you use this ink on black paper. This piece could also use some reinforcement, so I'm going to add a square of paper in the middle. This part of the video is only to inform you that the file cards are going to be used in this kind of way, but I will address that in my next video. Let's make a lid for this box. I'm going to get the measurements first, uh, but you can see that the inside is already embellished totally. The first bottom layer and also the smaller second layer. Um, <clears throat> I think that is better before uh, making a lid because then you exactly know the width um, of the lid and how wide it needs to be. So I'm going to uh, score the lines of the measurements that I just took. And uh, in the end you will have like um, a square, this upper left corner, and I will cut that out. Then I will cut in those tiny uh, lines on the left and also on the right side. So you can fold everything in to the inside. But before gluing those flaps together on the inside, I would like to collage on top of the lid with my collage medium and this piece of backdrop. So I'm going to um, put the paper on all four sides and in the square in the middle. And remember, no need for sharp edges, so you can tear the excess off. I want to keep the all over look the same, so I'm going back in here with my Distress Oxide Spray uh, Black Suit. And I'm going to do the same as I did before. I will ink up all the outer lines and inner lines of the square, and I will wet it down with my water bottle sprayer. That also means this paper will take a lot of water, it has to endure a lot, so I'm going to reinforce the inside of the lid with a piece of extra backdrop. After drying, I will stitch along all sides with a running stitch. And that will look like this. I will always leave on the longer threads, but if you do not like it, it is not necessary. Now let's glue!
look how cute this box already looks, but I want to do something extra. I want to make it look like a gift, like uh, with a bow and some embellishments on the sides. So I'm going to make a bow. I have a square piece of paper and I will fold it in uh, this kind of shape, open it up and on the opposite side, I will do exactly the same. Here I will make a cut on the right side of the center and also on the left side of the center. Now I will cut on the folded line on the right side towards the cut that we already just did. And I will also do that on the fold on the left side. I will turn my paper and then uh, make a cut exactly in the middle. Then I will cut out a triangle shape on the right side of the middle cut and also I will do the same thing on the left side, a triangle shape on the left side of the middle cut. Next step is to make a cut on the right fold and also on the left fold. After cutting this is the shape that we have. Now fold the two wings together and make a bended cut from bottom to the top. I am using a Distress Ink Vintage Photo to make this paper a little bit darker and grunged up. And after that, I'm also going to do some stitching along all sides. When you do not like stitching, you can skip this step. I also want some staining on top of my paper, so I got out my Vintage Photo Distress Ink, some water, and with these beautiful ink drops, I'm going to dab my paper into it. Make sure to let the paper dry before we go on to the gluing part. So I'm going to put some glue in the center and I will get one of those points and I'm going to direct it into the middle and glue it down. Repeat this step on all corners. I already tried to fit this bow on top of my box and those flaps that are sticking out, uh, I want to get rid of them because they will hang over the box and it does not look pretty. In total, I have two bows. The larger one will go on the bottom and this smaller one will go on top, but we still have that sticking out strip of paper on the bow and that is to finish up the bow. So wrap it around the center, put a little dot of glue on the back and squeeze it together and hold it in place until the glue is adhered. I will put the bow to the side to dry properly and I will focus on the box itself because when you look at a present maybe or a lot of times there is a kind of ribbon uh, on the sides and I'm going to recreate that with some strips of paper. All my strips of paper will get the same uh, treatment so I have roughened up the edges with the paper distressor. Right now I'm inking up the sides and I also would like a running stitch along all sides. I will glue all four strips to all four sides of the box exactly in the middle. I also made two strips for the top of the lid, so I will glue them down exactly at the same place and spot where those side strips are ending and I will pull it to the other side and make a connection. Now glue down the other strip and after that you have your hands free to top it off with the two bows. Now that our structure is done I would also like to point out that this video is part of a series because I really would like to show you how to make the rest and the embellishments. So I hope to see you soon. Bye!